What's, What's going, going on, on smart... smart people? Get out. Go. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know what got into her. <laughs> What's going on, smart people? I'm bringing you another coding video today. I'm joined with Kelly. We recently found out about this meme programming language. It's a real programming language. It's called LOL Code. And the syntax of it, how you declare your variables, how you do your functions, for loops, all that good stuff is written in, in meme talk. For those of you who don't know what I mean, this is basically, this would probably work, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and we spent the better part of today trying to master this coding language so that we can make a video for you today. And what better way to demonstrate our complete, our complete understanding of how this works than showing you how to calculate the Fibonacci numbers. For those of you who don't know, Kelly's going to explain what the Fibonacci's <laughs> but the Fibonacci numbers are. So it's basically a series of numbers and it consists of the number that you're calculating being a combination or a sum of the previous two numbers. Right. So for example, if you were to start with two numbers, 0 and 1, you would take them, add them together, and that would be the next term in your series. 0, 1 would give you a 1, and then you would take the previous two, which would be two ones, so that would give you a 2, and then a 3, a 5, an 8, and so on and so forth. And we're going to learn how to do that in this weird programming language today. Now for the record, uh, we're going to be taking an example from a website that has a bunch of examples of this, this coding language so you can learn how to implement it for yourself. We'll leave a link in the description. We're going to be following it pretty, pretty, you know, pretty strictly. Uh, but the, the purpose of this is to explain what exactly is going on when we do this code. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to point out is, uh, it's kind of my favorite thing of this code, is how to comment out your code. So to explain what your code is doing. Uh, in Python, you would do a hashtag in C++. I already forgot. Percent, I think? I think it no, is. No, that's LaTeX. Uh, C++, yeah. it also exists. Um, oh. And in LOL code, it's BTW. So BTW starts a comment. So this is, this is a comment. OK. <laughs> so let's go ahead. If we want to calculate the Fibonacci sequence, we're going to have to do some for looping. We're going to have to be taking stuff and adding stuff together. Uh, so we need to declare some variables. Um, one, th also, one thing to also point out is that with this programming language, pretty much everything is capitalized. This comment didn't need to be, but the thing that says that we're going to be commenting out is capitalized, and everything else is as well. Um, so let's go ahead and declare some variables. Which, so let's see here. Let's, uh, let's start with our index. So how do we do our index? I has a... <laughs> yeah, so you start the, to declare a variable, it's I has. I has a, a your variable name. So we're going to start with the index. We'll call it I. I has an I. <laughs> um, it's, is it is with a Z? I think it's yeah, with a Z. It's z yeah, and we'll start at zero. Zero. So That's, this is go ahead. assigning a value to your variable I. It's zero. Gives you the value. If you don't give it a value, it's going to assume it's a string, I'm pretty sure, but since we're saying that it's a zero, it's going to, it's going to pass, or it's going to change the data type to a number, to an integer. Now let's also do it for the first two terms in the series, which are going to be a zero and a one. We're going to assign variables to those. So same thing. I has a, and we'll call it fib one. It's zero. Okay. Kelly is mostly here for correcting me whenever I make these typos because it's super confusing. Sometimes you'll see here it's I has and has has a S and Z has a Z. <laughs> it's complete <laughs> nonsense and it drives me crazy. But for some reason she remembers all of this. He doesn't right. get it. He just doesn't get it. I don't. I has a fib two. So this is going to be our second term. It's one. You got to put a A right there. Oh yeah, you're right. There's going to be loads of typos in this, by the way. This oh, is not, not with one. me here. No, I'm just kidding. It's okay. okay. Um, what's next? You're going to start a loop. Start a loop. Okay. So. I, it's, um, <laughs> I like I'm, this part. This is my favorite part. <laughs> just, just, in Python, you would say, you would start with four, I in range, whatever. And here, you say, I'm in your <coughs> loop. And then you want to increase your index by some amount up in your i right yep till just one l he does not know meme speak till both same and 16 yes yeah, 16 so this is going to give us the the 
first 16 Fibonacci numbers. So between our I value, which is 0, and 16 is our range. If there's a typo in here, it'll be listed, or it'll, I'll, I'll probably say it in the edit, but I think that this is correct so far. I'm in your loop, up in your I, till both same and I is 16. So I want to start, I want to keep going, I want to keep increasing my I until I is 16. Cool. Um, you don't have to indent. Yeah, you don't have to indent. That's Which crazy. So weird. I mean, I guess if you're used to C++, that's nothing new, but whatever. Uh, what's next? Um, I'm up in your loop. So we need to create a new variable. So first you're going to um, print out the value of your first Fibonacci number. She's right. She's, she's so right. So to print stuff, you just say visible. This is probably the least meme speak out of everything. Visible means print. And or C out or whatever language you're using. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we want to print. We want to print the Fibonacci. Fibbo. Nacho. Nacho. I want to. I just want to make sure that we know which one it is. So Fibonacci, and and sorry. I, and. I'm going to explain what all this means. Equals an fib2? Fib, yes, fib2. Okay. What is this doing? Can you explain this? So, visible is printing out to your screen. Fibonacci is a string that you're printing. N, I, so that's concatenating I with Fibonacci, nacho, fibo, nacho. <laughs> So the ands are basically just concatenating anything that's like they're in between. So Fibonacci concatenated with I, with the equal sign, with the first value right. of our sequence. Yeah. So this is just writing Fibo and then the Fibonacci number that we're, or the uh, Fibonacci number one, for example, is equals and then whatever we end up calculating. And there's actually like a way easier way to do this, but I guess we can run it. <laughs> they're telling me this now. <laughs> We can run it and do it after. <laughs> okay, like, now we need to start. We need to start shifting things. We need to start calculating the subsequent Fibonacci numbers. So let's create another variable, Fib three. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I has. Sorry, I, I has a Fib three. Fits. Fits. Um, sum of Fib one and Fib two. Yep. Cool. And now we need to start shifting things. So uh, fib two becomes, or fib one becomes the fib two. Fib two becomes fib three. That way we can keep looping until we get to sixteen. And so when we uh, when we assign a value in this programming language, instead of just saying it equals, we say fib one are <laughs> fib two, and fib two are fib three, as you probably guessed. As you did. As you do. Uh, is there anything else? I think we can, we can um, break. Yeah. So, a <laughs> break. <laughs> um, and then Beca you got to close your loop. Because, so, this is a for loop, so it should end regardless. It should end once you get to the 16th index. Uh, but because we're not indenting, because it's not one of those kind of programming languages, I'm assuming, I'm assuming this is why we need to specify that we're breaking the loop. And to do that, we say... I'm out, out of your, out of your loop. <laughs> I love the loop structure. It's so great. Out of your loop. I like the functions. We're not getting into functions in this video. Maybe in a more advanced Ooh. one. Uh, the next one might be might be uh, solving the Riemann hypothesis in in this programming language. Mm -hmm. But functions are funny because the breakout of the functions. I think it's like GTFO or something like that. <laughs> um, I'm out of your loop, and then to end the code is K thanks bye <laughs> so cute hopefully there's not any errors here let's find out Ooh, we did it Woo! Yay. I was so nervous there okay we could probably pretty this now we can start working about like making this prettier so we could space out that Fibo so we got Fibo nacho number zero is one and so forth um, so for printing things um, like instead of putting an in between everything that you want to print, you can just uh, use a function called smoosh. <laughs> smoosh. Smoosh? Yes. How do I do that? So you put visible smoosh. No, you just put it in the beginning. Okay, smoosh. Smoosh. 
And then smoosh, everything you list after smoosh is going to, like smoosh concatenates everything, or smooshes everything together. This is a function? Yes. So you have Fibonacci, and then you can take the ands out. Okay. So you just have I. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. Equals, and then take the other and out. And I think that should work. Let's, oh, and you need, um, to end the function, you need an mk. Okay. So they know you're done, so mk. Mm okay. Mm -hmm. And then an exclamation point, or is that? What does that do? I think that just keeps, is that what puts everything on the same line? I don't know. I think it does, yeah. Okay, so we don't need the exclamation point. Okay. Um, so get rid of that. Yeah, okay. Oh, <laughs> that's so much better. Yeah. That's so much prettier. Okay, so yeah, I guess you don't need the ands if you, if you, if you know how to smoosh. If you know how to smoosh just right. Fibonacci I is this. I wonder if we could say, so now, this is pretty much it. You could go to any arbitrary uh, index you want. 20, if you're feeling that wild. Whoa. You could even, you can... Don't do it. Wow. Did it just go negative? Wait. Did it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm seeing... Oh, yes, it did! Fibonacci's don't go negative? What happened? Um, bonus points to those of you who know why this did this. I feel like I've seen something like this before. I'm not sure. It might be an overflow. Probably not though. Okay, let's let's break it back. Let's bring it back to twenty. Twenty was nice. Twenty is safe. For some reason or this 20 fails. Twenty is a dangerous number. For some reason this fails. If you go too high, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> get it? Get get out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna teach you guys how to interpolate. Um, go on. Teach me. Temperature as a function of your partition function. But that's it, guys. This was a uh, one more time. Take ten. But that's it guys. I know that this was kind of like a how-to video, but it wasn't meant to be. It was supposed to be more of like a, this kind of meme programming language exists. We didn't know it did until, or at least I didn't know it did until just a couple days ago. So maybe you guys didn't as well. I challenge you to be able to do more sophisticated things with this language. Maybe comment your code in the comment section below if you can, if, Lutu, if, Lutu, if YouTube lets you do that. We'll see you tomorrow.